The presence of antibodies is what they look for when they test for HIV. I was 22 years old in 1993. 10 years since the first cases had been reported about in NYC, now spread throughout its various communities, no longer them, because now it's we. But that didn't stop me from testing the breaking point of invincibility. I stepped into the room that smelled of sterility, where I waited for what seemed like an eternity to see what the results of my test would be. Your test came back positive, he said, nothing less, nothing more. Unable to look me in the eye, he stared down at the floor. He'd never delivered an HIV positive test result before. My impulse to bolt out the door was outweighed by the need to make sure that the doctor felt secure. So I stayed, and I was counseled some more. Seven years to live were some words I grabbed onto. Treatment options and not a death sentence were some others. Had I been another, I might have jumped in front of the two train like my girl Sharonda's little brother or hung myself in the bathroom with an extension cord like my boy Beto's baby's mother after they discovered that the baby had the monster too. But instead of suicidal ideation, I found that I actually had the will to live and that I actually possessed the power to forgive. Forgive myself for the choices I had made and the actions I had spoken. Forgive the one who infected me because he's dead and I have a long life ahead. Forgive my mother for her ignorance and for her religious convictions which allow her to believe in a God whose answers to drug addiction and homosexuality are AIDS and HIV. Forgive the doctor for his contradictions for his inaccurate depictions, for pushing mad prescriptions, for his seven-year prediction which caused me for some years to reside within my fear. It's been 16 and I'm still here. It's been 16 and I'm still here. Let me say this loud so you can hear. It's been 16 and I'm still here and I'm not going anywhere anytime soon.